Hi, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson for you is on arithmetic sequences. Our objectives today are that you will identify terms of an arithmetic sequence and that you will write arithmetic sequences as functions. Here's the question I want you thinking about today. How can you determine if a sequence is arithmetic? So we're going to start off with understanding that a sequence is an ordered list of numbers that follow a rule. So we have a list of numbers here, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. It's a sequence of numbers because and each number in the sequence is called a term. So 3 is a term, 6 is a term, 9 is a term. 3 is our first term. And then we have 18 is our sixth term. So each term has a specific position in the sequence. So we can say that 3 is in position 1, 18 is, a, is in position 6. And then as we continue on, we have our, what we'll refer to in algebra as our nth term, which is in our nth position, meaning it will keep going. So we've said dot, 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 so this extends infinitely to the right, so it keeps getting larger and larger. Now we talk about an arithmetic sequence, and which is a sequence where the difference between each pair of consecutive terms is the same. So we have our sequence here, and our consecutive terms are terms that follow each other in order without skipping. So we go from 3 to 6, 6 to 9, and when we do this, we need to have a common difference. So the difference between each of the pairs of consecutive terms must be the same, and you must be adding the same value, so our common difference. What is different between each consecutive terms? Here, we can see that we add 3, add 3, add 3, and we keep repeatedly adding 3 to get to the next term. So our common difference, or d, we use the variable d to refer to that, is 3. So if we wanted to continue the sequence, we would keep adding that common difference to the term, to the previous term, to get to the next term. So 27 plus 3, 30 plus 3. So it's a recurring formula is what we call that. So our first term, because it's an arithmetic sequence, we're going to use a. And A subscript 1 names the first term as A subscript 1. So that just refers to the first term in a sequence, and the A is noting that it's an arithmetic sequence. So basically, we're saying the name of the first term is A1. If we look at our sixth term, it would be A subscript 6. So if you see something like this, it's asking you what is the sixth term of the arithmetic sequence. And then as it extends, our nth term would be referred to as a subscript n. So n being the term number and a identifying that it's an arithmetic sequence. So we are going to identify the common difference of this arithmetic sequence and find the next three terms. So you're told that it's an arithmetic sequence. So you know that the same difference occurs between each consecutive pair of terms. So we're going to look here. We go from negative 4 to negative 8. So ask yourself, what do you add to negative 4 to get to negative 8? Then that needs to be the same to go from negative 8 to negative 12. So here's our consecutive terms, and you can see it's negative 4. Negative 4 plus negative 4 is negative 8. Negative 8, add negative 4 is negative 12. Negative 12, add negative 4 is negative 6. So our common difference, d, is negative 4. Our next three terms, we're going to continue to add negative 4. Negative 16 plus negative 4 is negative 20. Add negative 4 to negative 24. Add negative 4 to negative 28. So again, our arithmetic sequence has a common difference of negative 4, and the next three terms are found by repeatedly adding negative 4 to the previous term. Now it's your turn. I would like you to pause the video, identify the common difference of this arithmetic sequence, and find the next three terms. Come back and hit play when you're done. 
Welcome back. So our common difference here is we're going to add 0 0.25 or 25 hundredths repeatedly to get to the next term. So our common difference is 0 0.25 or 25 hundredths. To identify our next three terms, we're going to continue in that pattern by adding 25 hundredths to the previous term. So 2 plus 25 hundredths is 2.25. Add 25 hundredths and you get 2.5 or 2.5. Repeat that again, add another 25 hundredths and you get 2 and 75 hundredths or 2.75. Your turn. I'd like you to try another one. Find the common difference and then find the next three terms. Go ahead and pause and come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So our common difference here is it's going down. We're adding negative one third. So in an arithmetic sequence, our common difference is what we add. So sometimes we need to add a negative value. 5 plus negative 1 third is 4 and 2 thirds. 4 and 2 thirds add negative 1 third is 4 and 1 third. So our common difference is negative 1 third. And to keep going, 4 and 1 third add negative 1 third is 4. 4 and negative 1 third is 3 and 2 thirds. 3 and 2 thirds add negative 1 third is 3 and a third. Now we're going to graph an arithmetic sequence so that we can determine what kind of function this is. So we're going to complete this table, we're going to graph the sequence, and then I'm going to ask you what you can conclude about this sequence. So the first thing we're going to do is identify that the n is our term number. So terms 1, 2, 3, 4. So term 1 is 3. And we're going to show the relationship between the term number and the value of that term in this graph. So you can see I've labeled my x-axis n. This will be our term number of our sequence. And this is a subscript n. So this is what the value is of the specific term number. So a subscript 1, or the first term, is 3. So term 1 has a value of 3. Let's plot that. Term 2 has a value of 6. Now let's plot this ordered pair, 2, 6. Our third term is 9. Let's put that in our table, and let's graph it, 3, 9. And our fourth term is 12. So we can put that in our table and go graph it, 4, 12. So you can see that we have our function here. What can you conclude about this arithmetic sequence? I'm going to ask you to pause the video, write down your thoughts, and come back when you're ready to check those. Okay, welcome back. So hopefully you determined that this is a discrete linear function with a slope of 3. That slope of 3 is also our common difference. Add 3, add 3, add 3. The slope of this is 1, 2, 3 over 1. Rise 3, run 1. So we have a linear function, and it's discrete because you would not have a term one and a half. You have whole number integer terms, term one, two, three, four. You can't have one and a half or one and three fourths or 1.1. We have whole number inputs, making it a discrete function, but it's a linear pattern. And it's a constant rate of change of increase by three, our slope of this function is 3. So we're going to use that to write an equation. So the equation for an arithmetic sequence, which I would strongly suggest you write this down in your math notebooks, is any term, remember this uh, refers to a specific term of the sequence, any term n, and you can replace n with the term number you're looking for. So over here, term 1 would be a1 is equal to 3. D is our common difference, which here refers to the slope because it is linear in pattern. And our A, so our term number or output, our common difference, which here is 3. And we're going to skip this for a second. I'm going to talk about this first. This is always our first term. So usually in a linear function, you talk about your y-intercept. This is why this comes into play, and I'll show you this in a minute. We want to identify our starting point. 
When we have an arithmetic sequence, you have a very specific starting point. And your function, or your sequence, starts with that first term of your sequence. So we need to put that starting point here to tell this function rule where to start. And it doesn't always start with 0. You can see this function starts with 3. Now, that's why we have to do and multiply our slope by n minus 1. So our common difference, which is our rate of change, we're going to multiply by n minus 1 because we already have our first term here. So what we're doing is we're saying how many times we need to jump or add that common difference. So if I want to go to term 4, I need to do this common difference. I need to add 1, 2, 3 times. If we just put n here for the term number, we would get to the fifth term. So to go from term 1 to term 4, I need to jump three times. 1, 2, 3. So that's why we have to take 1 away to a lot for our starting number. So if I go ahead and distribute this, 3 times n is 3n, three, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, Combine our like terms, and our function would be a subscript n. So any term is equal to 3n. Now let's check this. This is how we would use it. So we would say that a is a function of n. So n being your input, which is your term number. Which term of the sequence are you looking for? And what you do is you take that term that you're looking for and multiply it by 3. So if we want to find term 4, this is how you would write this. This represents the value of term 4 would be 3 times 4. And here you have it, 12. So our term for term 4 has an output of 12. So we're going to write the equation for the arithmetic sequence, and then we're going to use our equation to find the 35th term. So that's why it's really important that you learn how to write a function rule for an arithmetic sequence because you're going to be asked to find a really large term in the sequence that's not practical for you to write out 35 terms. So finding our common difference, 16 add negative 4 is 12, 12 add negative 4 is 8, 8 add negative 4 is 4. So our common difference to this arithmetic sequence is negative 4. And our first term, very important to know where to start, is 16. So here is our function rule or our equation to write an arithmetic sequence, our common difference, times the number term we're looking for, subtract 1, to account for our starting place. So again, if I'm finding the 35th term, I need to make 34 jumps with that common difference. So my starting one, 34 times you add that common difference repeatedly to get to the 35th term. So to go from 1 to 35, I need to do this 34 times. So here we go. We're going to write our function rule first before we go do this. So we're going to distribute negative 4 times n is negative 4n, negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. Combine our like terms, and our function rule or an equation is negative 4n plus 20. So now we're going to go up here, and we want the 35th term. So this notation right here means a, the arithmetic sequence, the 35th term is equal to negative 4, times 35 plus 20. Noting that we've already gone and simplified this, but if we plug this in, 35 minus 1 would be 34, and that's where it comes into play here. So we just simplified that function to be this, to make it look like a linear function. We use this to get to this. So negative 4 times 35 is negative 140. Add your 20. And we know that the 35th term is negative 120. So you could plug this in here, but this is not in simplest form. So we want to write this as a function or an equation in simplest form. Or slope intercept, if you recognize that here. Our common difference of negative 4. All right, your turn. I would like you to write the equation for this arithmetic sequence. 
and find the 45th term. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So we're going to identify, I'm going to start here because this is easier. They've already told me this is an arithmetic sequence. So I just need to take one pair of consecutive terms and find the difference. So 1 to 4.5 was pretty easy to determine that I add 3.5 to 1 to get to 4.5. So you could start here, but that gets a little bit more complicated. So knowing when they tell you that it's an arithmetic sequence, pick two terms that's easy for you to identify that. So our common difference D is 3.5. Now we're going to use that we have our first term of negative 6 and go back to our rule or our equation for arithmetic sequences. So we're going to find any term number times our common difference. Remember, we're going to subtract that one from our n and start with our first term of negative 6. So we're going to take n minus 1 jumps of 3.5 and add it to our negative 6 to get to any term n. Let's distribute 3.5 times n, 3.5 times negative 1, combine our like terms, and we get a, an equation of a to any term n is equal to 3.5 times n, subtract 9.5. Now we're going to use this to find the 45th term. So the 45th term is use this notation, a subscript 45, we're going to take 3.5, multiply it by 45, and subtract 9.5. So 3.5 times 45 is 157.5, subtract 9.5, and you get that the 45th term is 148 in this sequence. Much easier than adding 3.5 45 times, or 44 times. And there you have it. That is how you find an arithmetic sequence's common difference identify additional terms, and how you write the equation of an arithmetic sequence. I thank you for joining me today, and I hope you'll come back soon at the Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. Have a great day.